now's the time to jumpstart job creation. It's an agenda that begins with jobs. It's time to rebuild our economy on a new foundation so that we've got real and sustained growth. Our focus has to be on the basic economic issues that matter most to you. In White House shorthand, it's called the pivot. President Obama did it again this week with big speeches designed to get the country behind him on the economic debates dividing Washington. A government shutdown and the prospect of default are looming again. Treasury Secretary Jack Lew and our roundtable here to weigh in on that. First, ABC's chief economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis takes a look at where things stand on the road to recovery. It's a tale of two economies. So what brings you in? Looking for, well, looking for a car. Looking for Excellent. two, looking for two cars, actually. Excellent. Wonderful. Nissan dealership manager Michael Monasterski says business is booming. Yes, He's well, seen a big well, increase in sales since the start of May. We have a lot more customers coming in, a lot more traffic, and a lot more um, real buyers. Then there's the other story. 11.8 million Americans without work. More than 4 million for six months or longer. On a scale of 1 to 10, how difficult is it to find a job? Um, I would say right now it's about an 8. Yet again, triggering a Washington blame game. With this endless parade of distractions and political posturing and phony scandals, Washington's taken its eye off the ball. Our country has fallen into the new normal of slow growth, high unemployment, and stagnant wages. There are some signs of improvement. Stocks are near all-time highs. Corporate America is turning out record profits. And home sales are up. But unemployment remains stubbornly high. And Americans overall are skeptical about the recovery. 82% say the economy is in just fair or poor condition. If Washington can't get it together this fall, then what? If they can't raise the debt ceiling, if they can't fund the government into the next fiscal year, then it's going to be a mess. And the, the risks to the economy are quite significant, easily go back into recession. For this week, Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Our thanks to Rebecca for that. Now let's turn to the Treasury Secretary, Jack Lew. Mr. Lew, thank you so much for joining us. We heard Mark Zandi in her piece say that Washington can hurt the recovery if it mishandles these fall showdowns. The first one is going to be over the funding of the government. The president has said that he's going to veto bills that fail to roll back the sequester. House Republicans are going to insist on those spending cuts. So are we headed to a government shutdown? You know, George, I think that uh, it is imperative that Washington be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Uh, we can't afford self-inflicted wounds, and we can't have these kinds of uh, self-created crises uh, month after month, year after year. But isn't that where we're We headed? saw how bad that was for the economy in 2011, and I hope that Congress learned that that is not a good way to do business. What the president said is when we do our business this year, we have to remember what we're here to do. We're here to build an economy with opportunity for the American middle class. He's trying to remind everyone in Washington what the people of America know, which is this is about their future, and we really need to to roll up our sleeves and get the work done. I know that's what he's trying to do, but how does he break this gridlock? And is he going to insist that any government funding bills roll back the sequester? Look, George, he's made clear that um, he is not going to sign uh, appropriation bills that fix defense at the expense of domestic priorities. He's made it clear that when Congress does its work in the fall, he's going to be looking to see, is it building a better future for the American middle class? I think that those are values that are shared by the American people. I think those are values that are shared by a majority in Congress. I think we're going to be able to work through these issues. And I certainly hope that Congress isn't looking to create confrontations and false crises, because we did see in 2011 how bad that is for the American economy. You cited the crisis uh, back in 2011 and the economic harm it did. It's, there certainly seems to be another standoff. The president says he's not going to negotiate. Speaker Boehner says he's going to insist on more spending cuts. So how do you come together on that? You know, George, I think it's important to remember how much we've done since 2011. You know, when we had these debates in 2011, uh, we hadn't enacted any of the savings or uh, revenue measures that we've now put in place. We have on multiple occasions come together in a bipartisan way. Through the Budget Control Act, we reduced spending. At the beginning of this year, we acted to remove the tax breaks for the very wealthy. What we need to do now is get the composition right. We need to remember that this isn't just about cutting budgets. Obviously, we need to have our fiscal house in order. It's what it's about is building the foundation for a strong economy. I think that there's the basis to work together on that. If the debate is just about abstract numbers, 
frankly, it misses the point. This I, is I about building a better future. I understand that those are the president's ideas, and you believe strongly in them, but, but I don't see the kind of basis for building on that that you're talking about. It sure seems like the sides are dug in right now. You know, George, I have talked to a lot of people in Congress, both sides of the aisle, Democrats and Republicans. I talk to leaders. I talk to you know, members and senators. There's a majority in Congress that wants to replace the across-the-board cuts with more sensible policies. Our challenge is breaking through the logjam in Congress to get that done. That's my so question. How are you going to do it? Well, I think what the president's done is provided a clear frame where the stakes are clearly in front of both Congress and the American people. I think that you know, if, if this is about what we want to accomplish, let's have a debate about what it takes to build a, a, an American middle class that's growing and thriving. But is it's your not bottom, just social policy, it's actually good economic policy. But is your a bottom line middle class still the actually same? actually produces a better economy. But is the bottom line, excuse me, still the same? The president is not going to negotiate over the debt limit. And if that's the case, aren't we headed for the showdown you fear? You know, George, I think that uh, a lot of people watched uh, 2011 and uh, learned from it that it was a big mistake. I think that the leaders learned from that that that's not a good way to do business. That Congress has to act on this. They're going to have to figure out a path to do it. And if that includes spending reductions, the president will sign it? You know, George, I think the president has made crystal clear he's not going to negotiate over the debt limit. And I've got to like underscore how important that is. The mere fact of negotiating over the debt limit after 2011 would introduce this notion that somehow there's a question about whether or not we're going to pay our bills, whether or not we're going to protect the full faith and credit of the United States. Well, it's not okay to default. Congress can't let us default. Congress has to do its work. So will you ask Senator Reid to pass the clean debt limit first? Congress is going to have to pass a debt limit that can reach bipartisan consensus in the Congress and the president can sign into law. Perhaps the most consequential economic decision the president's going to make in the next few weeks or months is the decision to replace Fed Chair Ben Bernanke. Um, and, and some lobbying has begun, it seems, uh, for two of the main candidates, Fed uh, Governor Janet Yellen, Larry Summers, the president's former national economic advisor, Speaker Pelosi, and about a third of the Senate Democrats have weighed in on behalf of the idea of a woman candidate and Janet Yellen. Your predecessor, Tim Geithner, is backing Larry Summers. Which side are you on? I know you're part of the discussions. And what is the president looking for in a Fed chair? You know, George, I have to start by saying that uh, Chairman Bernanke has been an extraordinary and remains an extraordinary Fed chairman. Um, I'm going to keep uh, private any conversations that we're having uh, uh, with the president uh, uh, on the question of, of when and uh, what kind of succession uh, there should be. I think that uh, those conversations are best left uh, in the privacy of the Oval Office. But the Senate letter suggests that Ms. Yellen will be easier to confirm than Larry Summers. Is that a factor? Yeah, you know, George, I'm really not going to get into commenting on, on different uh, candidates, different potential uh, uh, paths. Uh, the conversations really should stay where they are. Let me ask you about the situation facing Detroit right now, fi filing for federal bankruptcy last week. The governing board of the AFL-CIO has weighed in very strongly saying that the federal government must step up and provide assistance to Detroit. Is that going to be coming? You know, George, uh, Detroit's economic problems have been a long time in developing. We stand with Detroit trying to work through uh, how it approaches these issues. To the extent that there are kind of normal relations between the federal government and state and local government, we, we've been using those methods. Even in the Treasury Department, we have a program where we, we work uh, to, to help uh, uh, with housing programs. I, I think when it comes to the questions between Detroit and its creditors, that's really something that Detroit's going to have to work out uh, with its creditors. So federal bailout off the table? I, I think Detroit's going to have to work with its creditors on this. And that will be the last word today. Secretary Liu, thanks very much. Thanks, George.